it's a huge honour um, to be you know, a life member and now a club champion, a medal named after John Worsold, who um, is a guy I've idolised since I was a kid, started following footy. Um, he's had a massive impact on my life on and off the field. Um, he's always encouraged me to um, you know, play your strengths. Don't be anyone else other than yourself. And um, I can't thank him enough. So for this medal to be named after him, it is a massive honour. We saw a side of John speaking up there that we don't normally see. You know, there's a public sphere. Is that what he's sort of like behind closed doors? Uh, no, he's always been, you know, had that, um, that tough side to him. Um, but he's like everyone else, he does have a softer side and he said to himself a little tonight that he, you know, he, he's always looking to improve and better himself and he wants to open up a lot more. He wants to open up his heart and that was his words. So um, that's really nice to hear and obviously he's got that softer, gentler side that his family will see. You finished second a couple of times, did you ever think you'd win? Uh, no. Um, you know, you always go out there to play consistent footy every single year and that's what I've always done. Um, I was lucky enough to, to be on the right side of it this year and um, I'll continue to do exactly that for the rest of my career. Just train as hard as I can, play as hard as I can and um, that's all you can ever ask. Take us back to the beginning, you know, when you played your first game and stuff, uh, came around in different circumstances back in 06, but uh, here you are now holding a, a nice memory. Yeah, it's... Um, when I first walked into the club, you know, it boasted a pretty powerful midfield of Judd Kirk, Cousins, Fletcher, Stengel, and it, the list went on. So I really looked at it like it was going to be the best footy apprenticeship anyone could ever do. So um, I'm very grateful f you know, to get the opportunity to play at this footy club, and um, it's been fantastic to me, and um, hopefully I can play for a few more. Can I take you back even before that, when you had the draft testing? I think it was at Challenge Stadium. I remember having a chat with you at the time, and you'd missed out, and you'd missed out. Mm -hmm. How close did you actually ever think you came to maybe giving up on your AFL dream to be where you are now? Yeah, I've always said to myself, regardless um, of where you're going to be playing, you just want to play at the highest possible level, level to get the best out of yourself. And if that was playing for Subiaco and that was the highest possible level I could play at, then I'd be satisfied with that, and I'd try to be the best player I could for Subiaco. Um, so. I never would have given given up playing footy, you know, at that highest level until, you know, um, my body carked it basically. So um, to be able to get the opportunity at AFL and fulfil a childhood dream, it's it's pretty special. So how important was your self belief in continuing on and indeed to getting to this level now? Yeah, I've always loved training and I love getting the best out of myself. So I think once you have those sort of or that sort of attitude, you know, that. It's, you're always a chance. Um, you're seeing guys, you know, 24, 25 years of age getting opportunities now. So the, the door will only close once you close it. So while you're giving it everything and trying to, to you know, get that opportunity, you're always half a chance. How's pre season gone so far? It's been really exciting. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a new look, you know, style of play. Um, not, not a massive change, but. Um, just, you know, it's a really young coaching group and they're all very enthusiastic. Um, you know, they've been taking it pretty easy on us at the moment. They don't want to just throw it all on us pretty early. So they're, they're gradually um, implement, implementing um, their strategies and that sort of stuff. But um, early signs are very exciting.